What's up everybody, this is Jeff Bernard with Solve Systems and we're gonna run through a Power Automate build to call an API endpoint for Paylocity, getting all employees and bringing them into Power Automate and flattening the JSON. So that's a lot of words. We're gonna to try to break it down into a very simple Power Automate flow. If you have trouble building this, I have good news. Click the link in the description and you can purchase this code and upload it into your Power Automate instance as a zip file. If you have trouble from there, you can reach out to me. I would be happy to integrate this with further systems. So let's look at a high level overview of how this interaction is gonna work. Let's go. All right, so we're in the overview for this Power Automate flow. We're gonna start with a recurrence trigger, it just makes it simple. We can schedule it for whatever interval we want. We could run this every second if we wanted. You would probably really run up your Power Automate uh, allowances there, but it's possible, right? And so the reason why we're gonna do this is we would schedule this at probably an interval. Uh, there's some other ways of doing this. You could set sort of any other trigger, um, but this is how we're gonna do it for this. Then we have get all employees. So what this is gonna do is gonna call the Paylocity endpoint for all employees, and we're gonna bring that back into Power Automate. From there, we're gonna return that JSON and loop through each ID. So this endpoint is gonna give us a series of IDs within our Paylocity uh, instance, and we're gonna to have to loop through each ID, then we're gonna to have to make another API request, getting each individual employee, and then appending that, which is just adding uh, all of the employees to one file, which in essence flattens the JSON, makes it much easier to deal with, much easier to integrate with systems like Power BI or uh, post to a blob, etc. So let's get to it. You'll see here we have a bit of a new view with Microsoft Power Automate. See, the thing is, Power Automate is unleashing all kind of new features, which is Microsoft, and they're adding this cool new panel. This is really awesome because it allows you to look at these code blocks in granular detail, and you're able to quickly run through them without having to pop open things and close things. And to add to it, uh, in this time of ChatGPT, they've added a new GPT Copilot AI that will enable quicker builds for Power Automate flows. So I digress on that, let's get started. We'll go quickly to our recurrence trigger. And this is like we discussed uh, before, we're able to set this to whatever we want. We added a variable here, so you just go and add your variable for company ID. Then this is a given uh, company ID from Paylocity for our sandbox. And then this will be a production URL. So we're adding in a variable here and then adding the production URL and then adding a, another variable with the sandbox URL. Then this is the really cool part. We can add another variable that we could then tag our sandbox or production URL into to make this infinitely more scalable in subsequent API calls so we're not having to switch out URLs for each request block. Very inefficient. This is a much more performant way to do this. So then we have yet another variable, uh, Paylocity username, and then once more, one for Paylocity password. We're then gonna go to our token request, which will enable us to hit Paylocity's token server to authenticate subsequent API calls, and we add in our URL switcher here, and then the rest of the uh, string for that API endpoint. We'll add in our body here, the content type, uh, is up here and then basic authentication, uh, Paylocity username and password. So that gets us to the point where we're able to make a token request to authenticate. We'll parse the token here by adding the parse JSON function uh, and then the body as the content. And then here's where the magic starts happening. We will add a get request and then add in the same structure as above, URL switcher, parts of our string, a variable for company ID, so we can quickly switch these out between sandbox and production IDs, because those are gonna be different with the Paylocity API, employees, and then page size 5,000. 
One thing to note here is that page five, page size 5000 is important because uh, these things will be paginated, which means that if you made it like say 100, then you would have to loop through each one of the pages, increasing your uh, development time. So make it 5,000. If your company's over 5,000, you will have to uh, develop more. I can absolutely help you with that. Reach out to me if that's the case. Then we're gonna authorize it. We're gonna add in bearer here, access uh, the token from the parse JSON uh, function up here. So we're gonna add that into here. And if we hover over it, we'll see access token. We initialize a variable called var employee and make that an array. And we'll use that in the subsequent steps. Add a for each loop. And then we're going to start looping through the body of the get employees endpoint. So we'll parse each request that comes in. So we have a list of employees by their IDs, not by all of their information, but just their IDs. So this is going to break down each one of them. And then we'll make an API request for each employee ID. So you'll see here we have employee ID. Then this gets brought into yet another get request. We have the same structure as above, URL switcher. We have the structure of the endpoint. We have company ID and employee, you guessed it, ID. So what this is gonna do right here is get each employee by their ID. So say you have 5,000 employees, it's gonna do a request for each employee. Then it's gonna add their JSON schema to an array variable, creating a large JSON object, okay? So all this is, is taking employee one, adding it, employing two, adding that to the same file, recursively making a big JSON file, and then we're gonna put it into a compose just to collect it for development purposes. After our compose action is finished, we will then look at the result a massive JSON file, many, many, many 5,000 uh, arrays in here of JSON, massive, massive, massive file. And let's look at the execution time, which is another thing to consider whenever you're getting, uh, setting up schedules and expectations around when data should be at a location. So let's go check that out. This test took 48 minutes to run. By the way, the preview of a, of a run is the old view. So that's why it's not going back. I had execution time on the new AI view. It shows each block execute in the nice new form factor, but uh, after subsequent runs, it does not. So 48 minutes, it's a long time. So take that into consideration whenever you're setting all this stuff up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like and subscribe. Hit the little notification bell down below so that you can get notifications of when these new videos come up. And feel free to reach out to me if you need dev help. And also, go and download this code. Show some love. Show some support. Get up and running faster. If this is helpful, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.